Welcome to Jelly Trumpet! Welcome to Jelly Trumpet, making you more creative. Tips, tricks and ideas for expanding your imagination. Just a moment. What is it, Mr B? Would you like a coffee? Well, that would be lovely, but we are trying to do a podcast. No coffee then? Oh, go on. And a scotch egg. There you go. That was quick. Timing is everything, Jim. It is. Oh, there's a scotch egg in my coffee. Which you asked for. I did, didn't I? Oh, well, it's a literal world, Mr B. It certainly is, Mr Jim. Or is it? Welcome to Jelly Trumpet, making you more creative. Tips, tricks and ideas for expanding your imagination. Ahem, what was that? Oh, the squirrels are on the drum kit again. Let them do their solo then. Is it okay if the cat watches? What? The cat, she's learning about creativity when she's awake. Fine. Thank you, Mr B. Today we're in Hitchin, Hertfordshire. If you know Hitchin, we're just off Bedford Road, overlooking the town hall. We're watching the annual kitten and puppy parade. No owners, though. All the pets in Hitchin are self-aware. Ahem. What, what, Mr B? We've got a show to do. Well, I clearly forgot. Should I record your brain? What? So I can rewind it when you forget stuff? What use is rewinding? Wait, yes, record my brain and then I can rewind it back to when I had hope. Now then, Jim, we've talked about this before. Have we? Now then, Jim, we've talked about this before. Have we? Now then, Jim, we've talked about this before. I said it was all right to record my brain, Mr B, not put a loop in it. On with the show? On with the show. Mr B, the button. Coming up on Jelly Trumpet. You are your own medicine, an exercise to try at home. Challenge Jim. Silly, silly, silly things. And our guest spot featuring Jess King. Sponsored by Conversion Detectives, the really creative digital marketing agency. Search Conversion Detectives. You are your own medicine. You are your own medicine, uh, which means writing down in a diary or a journal or a note-taking app what is working for you creatively. It can be a piece of music you listen to, what you did yesterday, a writing tip from a book or an online tutorial. It can be lists of things that work when writing characters. That journal then acts as your very own creativity coach, helping you improve your creative game day after day. You are your own medicine. Time discipline. Now, here's something we touched on before and something that can burst you through first thoughts, which aren't always the most creative. So if you've ever gone to a good acting or improv workshop, you'll have come across this valuable tip, and that's setting time limits. The teacher gives you something to do, you're in a group, and the teacher says, create a tableau, you know, a still picture, something like a picnic scene. You mosey about and you form the picture. Now you keep bringing the time down. You have 30 seconds, you have 15, you have 10, and the teacher's counting. What happens? If you start to do weird stuff, better stuff, why? Because you've cut down your thinking time and you're just reacting. Time discipline can be used in other ways. We've talked about this before. If you're a writer, set yourself a time to write. The moment that time comes, you start writing, you don't take your pen off the paper or fingers off the keyboard for 10 minutes, say. Try it. If you persist, what we'll have is set your mind to write at will. It's not going to be easy. I find myself, when I started writing swear words, repeating words for line after line, and I found myself getting so angry I tore through the pages of my notebook with a pen. It is not for the faint-hearted. Nope. You're going to have to be stubborn. Thriller writers will build time discipline into the plot with the classic timer ticking down on the bomb. Now, I believe this exercise came from one of the first books I read about writing by an author called Doretha Brand and called Becoming a Writer. Well worth the read if you're serious about writing. Takeaway. How can you use time discipline in your work? Try it. Let us know how you get on. Mmm. Coffee and egg. Do you like it? Well, the salad cream makes it look like a latte. Another? Yes, please, Mr. B. Here you go. That was quick. Today I am anticipating. I see, Mr. B. Can we, uh... Have a drum roll? Certainly. I believe you're going to talk about something now. Oh, yes, yes. I'm going to talk about something. And now... Challenge at home. 
For this episode, your challenge at home is all about preparation and incubation. We've talked about being in the right frame of mind for ideas to come. It's relaxation, it's having fun, making light of ideas, and time discipline is a part of that. You may find when you start recording your medicine the odd things that set you off. Bring the passion that lets your imagination free to solve problems or to create brand new stuff. For me, driving a car often works, stepping into the shower, not in the shower, but stepping over the threshold of the shower, cooking, bittersweet symphony by the verve, scrolling through social media, because the brain is occupied. Going for a walk, that works for a lot of people. Chilling out with friends, watching movies you love, or going to new places, that's preparation. Incubation. This is when you have an idea but are unsure how to proceed. You have that niggle, don't you? It's not quite right, it doesn't quite fit. So two things here. William Faulkner said, you must kill your favourite children, meaning a favourite idea. One you are attached to, but it's not always the best idea. So you'll try and shoehorn it in, but it sticks out like a sore thumb. But you love it. The second thing, the poet and writer Natalie Goldberg suggests consigning these children to your compost heap. So I record these ideas. I love them, but it doesn't quite fit here. I'll just make a note and I'll move on. Months, even years later, that idea will flower. It's happened to me quite a lot recently. I go to write something and bang, that darling child romps in and gets into the project. So years ago, I went on a writing retreat at the Arvin Foundation. Well worth checking out if you're a writer. And I had this idea about a time-travelling hotel as a sitcom. I wrote it with three brothers. I forced the characters into the format. It was rubbish. Years later, I decided to have some fun and write some short stories. Hotel Landings, as it's called, cropped up, and I went with the first idea that popped into my head. Two daughters, a mother and a cook called Lloyd. So, thank you, compost heap. Oh, and you can get the Hotel Landing story as part of Story Wars, a short story for Kindle on Amazon only. Just search on my name, Jim Kinlong. Take away. Throw ideas that don't fit on your compost heap, because they'll grow into something worthwhile. What if we could create our own creative algorithm? Well, we do. We're the sum of what we do. More egg, Jim? No, thank you, Mr B. Pork pie? No, thank you, Mr B. I'm, I'm full of scotch egg, crisps and kebab. So, to sum up, you're a picnic? Uh, yes, Mr B. I'm a picnic. Creative Heroes In this episode, Eddie Izzard and the Art of Reincorporation. Now, the first time I saw Eddie Izzard live was at the St Albans Arena. He did this really long set. I'd seen him on telly or on DVD and loved everything he did, especially Pavlov's Cats and the petrol station with the queue of murderers. Anyway, he did the first part of his show and there was an intermission. He was funny, but nothing extra special. He comes back on after the intermission and he's utterly brilliant. That's Eddie. Surreal, word-orientated and a touch of mime. Why was he so funny in the second half? Reincorporation. Strange word, a long word, but it is showering the audience with his world and then bringing that world to fruition. It's repetition too. La cucaracha. Look him up and listen to the way he plants words or ideas early in the set, and then they pay off. He's made you familiar with an odd word, la cucaracha, or Caesar the dog food. The dog food is then a Roman emperor with the voice of James Mason. I'm not sure he's even the way he's doing it. Perhaps he is, or is it just how his mind works? Anyway, check out Dress to Kill. More about Eddie Izzard. Edward John Izzard, now he moved around a lot when he was young and he lost his mum when he was six. And John Cleese once described him as the lost python. Love you, Eddie. And now here is Mr. B with a musical mashup. What's it to be? Mr. B? Well, this one's a classic, Mr. Jim. It's Beethoven's Dubstep Sonata.
guest spot. Our guest on this episode of Jelly Trumpet is Jessica King, an actor based in Hertfordshire. Hello, Jess. How are you doing? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Good. Looking forward to this very much. Now, let's go straight into it. What are you currently doing? So, I'm currently working as a drama uh, teacher. So, I teach children acting, singing, dancing, general musical theatre. And so I teach after school clubs to children kind of aged between four and 12, usually. Um, I'm also working as an actor in part of a film trilogy, which is currently on pause due to COVID-19. But hopefully we'll be able to resume over the next coming months. So that's quite exciting. Cool. Cool. So how did did you (laughs) come to get into being an actor? How did that all start? Well, if we go right back, I started doing ballet when I was two years old. Um, And so that was my first time on stage when I was two, running around in a leotard with fairy wings and probably not having a clue what was going on. (laughs) Um, But since then, I danced um, all the way up until I was, well, continued dancing, but I was just a dancer until I was about 12. And then at 12, there was a musical theatre club that I then joined. So I then got introduced into kind of singing and acting as well as dancing. Mm. And then went, did musical theatre all the way up until um, college. And I then did a um, three year diploma at Talia Conti, training in musical theatre. And then since graduation, um, I do work as an actor, singer and dancer. But while I was at college, I um, found myself more interested in the acting side of things Mm -hmm. Um, it was just something that kind of held on to me a lot more than the singing and dancing Mm -hmm. and then since graduation most of the work I've done has been straight acting or there's been a job where I may sing a little I may dance a little but I find myself being more of an actor than a musical theatre performer. So um, what's your earliest memory of doing something that was creative? Blimey Um, I think I mean, as I said, I've been performing my whole life as long as I can remember. So there's always been creativity in my life from such a young age. I think when I was at school, when I was doing my A-level drama, I think that was the first time that I had to bring a lot of my own creativity into it. We had to do, um, as part of our exam, a devised piece where we had to completely write and put together a whole script and play from scratch me and four others I think that's the first time that I really had to bring a lot from myself whereas you know before it had been I'd always been a performer but it always been someone else telling me you know where to stand what dance move to do what words to sing whatever it may be Mm. I think that was the first time where I really had to bring a lot of my own to it have you ever borrowed directly from someone else's work or should we call it uh, an influence when you've been a character? Do you think? Mm. Are you going to own up to that? <laughs> <laughs> I still no. I don't know. I think, I think you get influenced by people all the time. I think, uh, as I was saying, you know, I learn a lot of things from watching other people, yeah. whether that be in theatre or TV, and especially if you then play a character when you've seen that part played before. Mm. I think there'll always be part of you that might see bits you like and want to implement into your work, and then there'll be bits you don't like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's a really interesting one because I, I can't pinpoint a particular moment, but I think I'm influenced all the time by things that I see and things mm. that I read. Sure. And that's always been developing me and then yeah. the, therefore the work I produce. So, so you're absorbing yeah. unconsciously lots of things. Yeah, exactly. You don't try I, to... Yeah, so I don't think it's anything in particular that I think but um, that I've, you know, definitely stolen or whatever. But, um, yeah, I think you can learn and absorb from different actors and different people all the time and put that into you if you want to. <laughs> yeah, if you want to. So I'm a great believer in telling people that only they know how to be more creative and they should record the details of what works and what doesn't work for them. So it's like uh, a journal and it becomes like a self-coaching of your creative self. Mm. Do you agree with that? Do you write down hints for yourself, what works, what doesn't work, you know, things like that? So I do have a um, book 
I don't know if we can strictly call it a journal, but I have a, um, a book that I write in um, where I write and document every audition that I do um, and every job that I do. And I, it's made, a lot of it is sentimental for me anyway, to remember mm. things that I've done and um, also to remember people that I've met. Um, so I can write down who, who I met on the day or within the job, um, the dates of that particular um, job or audition. Um, and then I write kind of pros and cons of the job and the audition. And that's sometimes just what I reflect on from, from the work, but then also um, in myself. So maybe I'll go to an audition sometimes and it just doesn't go your way on that day. Um, and I can write, you know, what I did that maybe meant why I didn't get the, the role, what I might have done. That, um, and that's not to be overly critical, but I think it's just useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there are some auditions where I've left and thought, oh, I really should have. Um, you know, maybe I wasn't overly confident on the lines because I got the audition the day before. Mm. And, you know, it might have been something like that, that maybe if I'd um, spent a bit more time on the lines and felt a bit more confident about it, maybe it would have gone differently. Um, it could be anything that I could write, but I find that really useful um, to look back on and just see what, where I go right and where I go wrong. That's really interesting. You've got yeah. sort of like a diary approach to it because you're a, yeah. you remember what's gone on, but you're also you are self critiquing yourself in a in a positive yeah. way, which is what being your own medicine is what I spout on about, which works. So that's mm. really interesting because you're the first guest that's ever done that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so what's what's the best thing someone has said to you that kept you going when when it was a bit of a struggle? I've had two lovely directors who have given me some really really nice um comments and words of encouragement um and i think for one of them in particular we were having a quite a tricky rehearsal week because we were on a quite a tight deadline and it was um really busy we still had a lot to do and not enough time and there was a bit of a panic and um the director just kind of called me to the side um you know, individually before a rehearsal one day and just said how well I was doing. And I felt a bit in, in the cast, there were other people in the cast who had done this kind of show before and I was a bit new and he just wanted to kind of encourage me that I was doing really well and was um, really, really, you know, great in what I was doing, which was lovely to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can kind of go into the rehearsal room with confidence that we can do this and we can achieve what we need to. And obviously it was a team effort anyway, but it was nice that he um, took the moment to kind of um, give me some personal comments, which was lovely. What's your next project? What have you got up come, upcoming? Well, I have this film trilogy, um, which I've been a part of for the past year now, uh, called The Scowling Dusk. Uh, so it's a um, very interesting project um, and because it's an independently um, run project. It, uh, we do lots of filming, but it's very kind of few and far in between. It's an ongoing project, which obviously has been put on pause due to COVID, that hopefully we'll be able to start doing some small scenes here and there over the next couple of months. So that is an ongoing um, project, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, how are people going to be able to see that? Do you know how it's going to be released, that short movie? That's a good question. Um, there's been talks about it being on YouTube, um, but when we reach the final um, product, uh, we'll have to find out, but they are on Twitter. Um, we're not nearly finished yet, so that may change as to where it's going to be released. Right, okay. Is there uh, anything else that you're working on? Any other projects? Because you probably have more than one on, on the go uh, at the time, don't well, you? There's, there's been talks about the Gin Chronicles as well, and there's been talks about how we can maybe perform that, because we did a performance last Christmas, so we were meant to be performing this Christmas, but um, that's looking highly unlikely now. So there's been talks about what, how else we might be able to um, do a performance or a production of it. Um, can't reveal too much yet, um, but hopefully that's something that's kind of in the works that um, I will hopefully be involved with as well, which is nice. Now, uh, you're marooned on a desert island. Which three things wouldn't you want? Wouldn't you want? Oh. Goodness, I wouldn't want a television <laughs> with me because um, I think that might be a bit useless out in the in the sun. Um, 
wouldn't want. That's really interesting. So it's always obviously the other way around. Mm. Mm. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want my laptop because it would die. <laughs> Maybe all technology. Um, I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want my cat there because I feel like it wouldn't make it, and that would be sad. <laughs> oh, that's just such a lovely thing to say. This is the last question I always ask all our guests because I think it's one of the most important ones. If a 10-year-old asked you, what one thing would make me more creative, what would you reply? Oh, that's good. Because I teach children of that age, so I'm yeah. sure they could ask me that. I would say joining a club in what you're interested in is very useful so that you can learn a lot from that. Um, if that's not um accessible to you then i think what i've what i've already said read watch just learn and absorb i think you know you can get so many different ideas from watching things and reading things but not necessarily always watching you know tv shows and films but even going on things like youtube there's so many kind of you know acting techniques or things that are on online accessibly to on youtube that you know you can learn from so I think if you can't get yourself to a club where you can learn more skills and have an opportunity to be creative there um yeah watching can always help learn and um, um, you know writing your own ideas if, mm. if you want to build a character pick a script from anywhere you know, there's so many scripts online pick a monologue and learn it learn it in front of the mirror learn it record yourself doing it I think you know and you can really learn from that kind of thing Excellent answer. Now, um, finally, how, how can any listeners get in touch with you? Okay, so um, I have Instagram and Twitter. So you can find me there at Jessica underscore King underscore one. Uh, I also have a Facebook page, uh, which is Jessica King. So you can find me on there as well. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So that was Jess King, uh, actor from Hertfordshire, giving us um, a very interesting chat. Thank you, Jess. See ya. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Bye. If the god of advertising came to me and asked me to advertise a jolly nice Australian red, what I would do is feature lots of people with their feet up, rubbing their socked covered feet together. I'd call it the wine drop. Anyone can join. That's a bit rubbish, Jim. Oh well, not everything works. A bit like Northern Rail. Challenge Jim! Jim, your challenge this episode is to generate 10 ideas for a play about mice. About you have, mice? Yep, you, about mice. 10 ideas, play about mice. How long? You have one minute. One minute. Starting now. Uh, of mice and men. Oh, that's been done, hasn't it? Yep. Ham and cheese, the sandwich. That could be a musical. Uh, Macbeth and cheese. No, yes, there's a cheese theme. Jim. There's a cheese theme going it's a here. Mice theme, really. Uh, well, it's uh, the mouse, Gatier, and me. I like. Yeah, well, it's a bit Disney, isn't it? It is a bit. Um, let me think. Ham, 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 eek. Mm. Mouse meets his father. M mouse meets his dead father. Ham, eek. eek. Yeah. Um, Thirty uh, seconds. Um, uh, the 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 cherry mouse oh. in an orchard. Yes, and there'll be a lot of strife in it, the cherry mouse. The mouse on the hill. The mouse on the hill. I like that. What other good place do we like? Oh, I was in one. The red mouse. Yeah, that will work. We can make it about communism. Ten seconds. Oh, communism is about gone by, isn't it? Like that. The lady mice. Five. Lady four, mice killers. Three, two. Yeah, I have not gone well there, have I? I have not done well at all. Hot Topic! Now, if you're a creative type, there are going to be competitions you can enter. That's great because you have a deadline. Work doesn't meander from month to month. Organising your work is also a skill to learn. If you have a deadline, then you know how much you have to create each day. So I work Monday to Friday on my clients' businesses. Everything from email sends to SEO and analytics. Saturday comes and I write. Or have a bit of a light in, but I'm usually working by 9.30. I don't set myself targets in terms of words or pages, but in time. So I write for an hour and I take a break, then another hour, etc. So if I work for over three hours, I feel okay. If I get to five, I'm ecstatic. 
Sometimes, due to too much work during the week, I've had to take Saturdays off. I just have that feeling, that feeling of, I just can't face writing. And if I force myself, the resistance grows and I spiral down into a low mood. The only time I've ever broken this was writing for a sitcom competition, which had a deadline, and there I was, on the sofa on a Saturday, in my PJs, desperately trying to achieve the page count. Well, I did it, and how did I feel? I felt I'd achieved nothing but darkness. I'd written rubbish. I was even more tired and wanted to give up on all forms of creativity. If you push too hard, you may enter that darkness. Please don't do it. Rest when your body and mind want to. It's not lazy. You'll come back refreshed, stronger, and with ideas to hone. So self-care, never lose sight of that. Go ahead, corner. Is that Jim? Yes, it is. It's Hank Jim, remember? Professor of Liquid Creativity at the University of Groningen. Didn't you call him the last episode and the episode before that? That is correct. Uh, why are you calling again? I have a quote about creativity just for you, Jim. Go on. The more marshmallows in your mouth, the less on the plate, and you cannot speak of it. Thank you, Hank. Oh, it seems we've lost Hank. I have another spot for those marshmallows. List of the week! Now, I love lists. And in this episode, Jungarian archetypes. Stay with me, people. I quote, Carl Jung understood archetypes as universal archaic patterns and images that derive from the collective's unconscious and are the psychic counterpart of instinct. Whoa! What does that mean? Well, character types that repeat in the arts. And actually, this is a list from The Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell. So we have eight character types, or personalities, that appear often in a work. So we have the hero, the central character, think Mulan or Harry Potter. We have the mentor character, advises and guides, Mr. Miyagi in Karate Kid. The ally, Samwise Gamgee on Lord of the Rings, the Herald. So the Herald announces a need for change. So in Star Wars, that's RTD2. The trickster, fun and laughs. So we would see Donkey and Shrek, for example. The shapeshifter, moves between ally and enemy. Gilderoy Lockhart in Harry Potter is a classic example. The guardian, who's like a mini boss you need to pass to get to the next level. The Whomping Willow in Harry Potter. Shadow, the villain, good old Darth Vader. There you are. You now know all the characters of all the books and movies in the world. OK, so I'm being a bit silly here. But just run through your favourite works and see how many of these archetypes you can spot. Further thinking spot. Bored Panda. You heard me right. It's a website created by a Lithuanian student who wanted to produce upbeat and heartwarming stories. Why check it out? Well, you're going to learn how to write a headline and what people like to read. Why not see if you can take an entry and turn it into a piece of work? Could be fun. Join us in further episodes and be more creative. Pick up tips and tricks you can put into play instantly. Try exercises to boost your imagination. Listen to creative guests and a whole lot of what we call fun. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or ideas for Jelly Trumpet, email us jelly at jellytrumpet.com. That was Jelly Trumpet, making you more creative with Jim Kinlock and Mr B. Sponsored by Conversion Detectives, the really creative digital marketing agency. Search Conversion Detectives. Now, here's Mr B playing us Don't Take Me Home by We Paint Houses, a melodic rock band. Find them on Facetube and Bandcamp.
I wonder what he's doing now. Who? Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran? Yes. Wait. No, I meant the other one. Who is? Banksy. Now I understand. You do? No. Oh. I don't think anyone will ever understand you fully, Jim. Not even Banksy? He might. Really? Yes, if he was hypnotised. Hmm. That's the nicest thing you've ever imagined for me. You're welcome, Mr Jim. <laughs>